When the first bell rang on a new school year, those same officials left it up to each school district and parents across the region to decide how they would educate students. To be honest, it's very hurtful uh, as a teacher to have our safety and our needs disregarded. Jocelyn Delancey, a um, fifth grade teacher in Darien and Connecticut Education Association here. board member, uh, spoke to me exclusively through Zoom about her concerns for teachers during COVID. You are on the front lines when it comes to educating these kids. We're doing our best, but sometimes I think the patience and care for our best is not is not there. And it's that lack of patience that forced Darien teachers to hold a rally. Give us space! So their voices can be heard outside the Board of Education in Darien. <laughs> These educators feel there are no guidelines across the board. And News 12 investigates found that these teachers are unable to strike if the protocols outlined by school districts are not followed. We have teachers who've requested to work remotely and that request has been denied. Delancey's fear is that her school system, like many others in the state, is fast tracking their plans to move from their current hybrid model of learning. So if you can just take a minute to jot down. Which entails both remote and in-person learning, to a full-time in-person schedule. This newly released collection of data from the early part of the school year put out by the Connecticut State Department of Education shows over 62% of school districts are doing a hybrid model of learning, similar to what's being done in New York. New Jersey originally required all districts to offer at least a hybrid model, but eventually allowed all remote learning after some districts said they could not open in person safely. Now New Jersey is only 51% hybrid learning. All right, Nasheri, you want to go ahead? In Connecticut, there are 509,000 students currently in the school systems. Less than a third of those are full-time remote. My hunch is that even if you've heard the book before... But that does not mean the teachers are fully remote, too. Most are required to physically teach in their classrooms for distance learning. But what happens when there is a COVID case reported in one of those classrooms? They still had to go into the physical school, even though they may have had a pre-existing condition. Right. That's the primary issue that, that uh, certainly the teachers who have retained me have complained about. Attorney Gary Phelan has about a dozen teachers he represents, and he says he doesn't understand why school districts can't be more flexible in this very difficult time. We're Connecticut. We're leading, you know, edge kind of place with respect to medical guidance. Why not take advantage of it and spread it throughout the state as opposed to each school district trying to navigate this? Who should that come from, the guidance? I think from the, you know, the State Department of Health. Phelan says his clients are being given an ultimatum at a time when education should be more about the students. Either do what, you know, what, sort of what we're giving you or else, you know, you're unemployed for the next year. This is a frightening health issue. And so we're trying to be as uh, understanding as possible. Dr. Janet Robinson is the superintendent of Stratford Public Schools. We want to figure out all the things we need to do. Her biggest issue, she says, has been over PPE concerns. The teachers in her school district are required to be in school full time. And she says remote teaching is just not an option at this time because there are no remote teaching positions. Even with all that being said, we're still hearing from a lot of the teachers union saying, well, you know, this isn't good enough. I know, I know. We're doing, we're doing what's considered, you know, the best practice. Not all of the protocols are necessarily clear. So what else can Delancey and other teachers across the tri-state do? Um, that is as uncertain as what the rest of 2020 will bring. And we know, let's face it, that more cases are coming. So what, what do we do? I think that's where we have to really stop and say, what's next and have really good plans. Mark Sudol, News 12 Investigates.